Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So as of late, no matter which trucking news outlet you turn to, you're going to see at least one article saying how things seem to be getting better or that the bottom of the freight cycle is in the rear view mirror. But at the same time, all of these news outlets also have a ton of articles saying how bad things are getting in the trucking industry. So this begs the question, what is actually happening? What is driving the current freight market? Now, in this video, of course, we will be hitting the topic of elections. There is no way to avoid it because this is a huge factor. So a very quick request. I made it a point not to express my political opinions on this channel, but I do understand that since we are hitting the topic of election, there will be a lot of opinions in the comments. Now, considering the political environment, I know that those opinions and discussions can get heated. So my request, if you could just remain professional in your disagreements. Ready? Let's go. So before we talk about the elections, let's focus specifically on trucking. And we'll start with the lenders, the financing companies that make it possible for us, for a lot of folks in the industry, to finance their equipment. Now, according to FreightWaves, BMO is one of the largest lenders in the trucking industry. We use BMO as well. Its transportation unit has a customer base believed to be in the tens of thousands. Roughly 90% of its transportation sector is reportedly truck financing. So in quarter three of 2022, they had extremely low losses. But then in quarter four of 2022, the loss was 2 million. And I quote, since that quarter four 2022 figure, the provisions rose sequentially to 6 million, 18 million, 19 million, 26 million, and 41 million before its latest amount. In one year, provisions for credit losses in the transportation group at BMO have risen about 210%. Even in the depths of the pandemic, in the second quarter of 2020, provisions for credit losses in BMO's transportation group were only 38 million. So basically folks who are financing these trucks according to BMO's numbers are less and less likely to actually make those payments on time or at all, which shows us that yeah, there is still an issue with money in the trucking industry. Now let's talk about the trucking job side. We often talk about capacity increases or decreases, and the way we measure that is by looking how many carriers went in versus went out and what the net change in carrier population is. Now, something we're all aware of is that when a carrier shuts down, those drivers that worked under that MC might be going and getting hired by other carriers, therefore not really decreasing the amount of dispatchable trucks. Now, according to Landline, thousands of trucking jobs were lost in May as overcapacity, low rates and high operating costs continue to plague the industry. According to the latest number from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, more than 5,000 trucking jobs were eliminated from the economy in May. This marks the second consecutive month loss, which was preceded by a five month growth streak. Five months in, trucking jobs are down by nearly 2,000 for the year. Total employment in trucking is down by 30,000 jobs compared to a year ago. So yeah, capacity is definitely still decreasing and we're not just judging by the fact that the number of MCs is decreasing. It's just that the number of dispatchable trucks is decreasing because those employment numbers are getting cut and cut and cut. But I think that we can all agree that in the past month, things have become a little bit slightly more manageable when it comes to the freight market. So what gives? Well, some of you in the comments have said that the market is showing slight improvement because of the upcoming presidential election. So I decided to dig deeper. Again, I refuse, absolutely refuse to play the game of politics. I do that enough in my everyday life. This is not what this channel is about. But since this is quite a big factor in what is affecting trucking right now, we will have to look at the facts. And 
to be quite honest, it was really, really difficult to find neutral sources. Why are elections important? Well, because of the economy and the health of the economy is strongly tied to the health of the trucking industry. So the Bureau of Economic and Business Research decided to do a study on consumer sentiment and behavior during elections. And this is super important because at the end of the day, consumers do drive the economy. The more optimistic they are about the future, the more likely they are to spend. As they spend more, retailers need more inventory. That inventory needs to be manufactured. And in between all of that are trucks, which means volumes usually start climbing up. So what the study found was that consumer sentiment is actually affected after the elections already happen. And I quote, the findings indicate a significant boost to consumer morale when their affiliated party won elections, particularly following presidential elections where there was a change in the presidential party, such as those in 1992, 2000, 2008, and 2016. As anticipated, consumer sentiments showed an inverse pattern between Democrats and Republicans. When a Democrat won the presidency, Democrats' positive sentiments rose, while Republicans' positive sentiments declined, and vice versa when a Republican won. All right, that makes sense. But the question is, what are people feeling as of right now? Well, we all know that many Americans are super concerned when they look at the economy because the inflation as well as the increased consumer price index makes it very, very difficult to afford the necessities that they need. Forget about things that they don't need. Now, according to Forbes, Consumer sentiment is now about 18% lower than it was when Joe Biden took office in 2021 and 32% lower than it was at the 2017 handoff from the Obama administration to the Trump administration. Americans' confidence in Biden's handling of the economy is the weakest faith in a president since 2008. I'm attaching all the articles down below. So taking everything that we have talked about right now into consideration, I conclude that we are in a cluster of a situation. It's hard to tell whether the market is actually improving or whether it has to do with some other factors. Is it just temporary seasonality or is it something more? Is it the fact that the election is coming up? Is it the fact that things have got so bad in the industry that more people are leaving and kind of swinging that supply and demand pendulum more in the carrier side? So my question is to you guys, what do you think is driving the current freight market? And especially if you have felt a shift, no matter how small in the freight market in the past month, I'm very curious to hear what you think the reason is and whether it's going to last or whether it's just a temporary phenomenon driven by something else. Because personally, I am so torn. My brain hurts after making this or writing up this video and doing research. So I'm very curious to hear opinions. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend and a wonderful start to your week tomorrow. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep learning. See you in the next video.